Welcome back. We're here with the second to final presentation from the X-Tech 4 semifinals today. The next presentation is going to be given by Dr. Barry Jenkins, CEO and co-founder from Primal Space Systems. He's joining us here live from Raleigh, North Carolina. The by a 10-minute Q&A. And after the first 10 minutes, we'll ring a little bell to, uh, to cut them off with love notes and for Q&A. So, Dr. Jenkins, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Barry Jenkins, CEO, co-founder of Primal Space Systems. Uh, we're a startup software company in Raleigh, North Carolina. Our company was founded to provide unique uh, software solution to more efficiently manage the vast amounts of 3D data that's required by C5 ISR, tactical navigation systems, autonomous navigation systems, and other commercial applications of 3D data. If you could show the first slide, this software uh, solves three important problems associated with this today can acquire 3D reconnaissance and 3D navigational data at massive data rates. But the processing of this data at the edge of the network is often constrained by limited compute capabilities and storage capabilities of forward deployed devices such as handheld and small UAVs. Secondly, the dissemination of this data can be limited by bandwidth and latency constraints at the tactical edge of the network. And finally, effective exploitation of 3D data by C5 ISR and GPS-9 navigation and guidance systems is limited by a lack of efficient standard protocol for fused 3D data delivery that simultaneously supports and connects C5 ISR systems to autonomous navigation systems. Next slide, please. Prime Space Systems software uniquely addresses these problems through a combination of an open source protocol and an open core software stack that supports this protocol to significantly improve the deliverability and usability of 3D data at the tactical edge of the network. The open source protocol is a proposed extension to the existing Open Geospatial Consortium 3D tiles format, which is used widely in the geospatial and by defense prime contractors and clients such as the Army Geospatial Center. The extension is called 3D Tiles Nav, and it was proposed by Primal Space Systems as a member of the OGC Technical Committee just a few months back. It fundamentally restructures 3D data from an object-centric format to a novel navigation-centric format that enables on-demand streaming delivery over low bandwidth technical networks and improves the performance of client-side rendering uh, for tactical visualization applications and also improves the performance of 3D map matching navigation systems, enabling new levels of intelligent goal-directed autonomy, such as exhaustive search, adaptive route finding, especially in complex obstacle-rich GPS-denied environments, such as low altitude or ground operations in the urban canyon or indoors. The potential capabilities of this new open source protocol are realized by Primal Space Systems GPEG, Geometry Pump Engine Group software stack, which consists of encoder, server, client, middleware, with, and that respectively are capable of generating, streaming, and decoding 3D tiles nav data for efficient use by existing C5 ISR and GPS denied navigation systems. The protocol also enables th uh, 3D data sharing and interoperability between C5 ISR and sensor based navigation systems. Uh, next slide, please. This is operational view one showing JPEG software components working with data in open geospatial consortium 3D tiles format. The JPEG encoder and server enables efficient delivery and enhanced edge compute processing for C5 ISR and tactical visualization applications, uh, such as augmented reality analysis uh, and mission planning. And most importantly, the same data uh, can support precision sensor-based uh, GPS denied navigation uh, and enable goal-directed autonomy, such as maximally covered and concealed ingress and egress. And this is made possible using unique pre-computed view shed metadata uh, that's included in 3D tiles nav and that I'll speak about in a moment. The most important thing in this slide is that every navigating vehicle and aircraft using the standard protocol is potentially capable of continuously cooperatively mapping and remapping an area using rapid early change detection and transmitting only the changes to remote or local peer servers in order to maintain a distributed common operating picture and a navigational data repository that is virtually immediately available to the next client entering this hyperlocal area. Next slide, please. This is a level slide, slide to show that, of course, GPS and I navigation is possible with the right data on board, and, and it's possible today. If you click on the left panel, you'll see a video showing near-Earth autonomy uh, operating outside of Pittsburgh with a small UAV. 
uh, doing GPS den denied navigation uh, through 3D map matching, which matches the white point cloud data set. If you click there, it'll probably show the video. The white point cloud data set to the green real time uh, uh, sensor data set that is being generated. But 3D Tiles Nav and JPEG software will enable much better ways to develop and distribute this uh, critical 3D data to rapidly allow this type of navigation in complex, obstacle-rich, previously unmapped and otherwise denied operating environments. Next slide, please. This is a high-level architectural view of the encoder, server, and client software components. The, our JPEG encoder converts 3D tiles or really any 3D data into the more deliverable 3D Tiles Nav data. And the server software can then deliver this data from any remote or peer server to a client using rapid burst uploading and downloading, continuous comms are not required, and instance uh, on-demand streaming availability of the data in a bi-directional uh, way is also supported. The client middleware piece is actually a thin middleware piece that can integrate to C5 ISR navigation systems using an open API. And the JPEG encoding, this, this diagram here, indicates that JPEG encoding restructures the geospatial data uh, by encoding only those surfaces that are potentially visible to a sensor from these automatically generated boxes or view cells, which are such are one or two meter boxes that comprise the navigable space of the environment and they're automatically generated by encoder. Next slide, please. Uh, this visualization uh, is of the JPEG streaming and client side utilization. And this emphasizes that we are not streaming video, we're streaming the underlying 3D geometry and optionally the textures required by the uh, 3D application. It shows here three view cells that I mentioned before, automatically generated from many thousands that are generated by the encoder. And it also shows that the 3D map is organized here based on which surfaces are potentially visible to the sensors from each view cell. So for example, the green triangles of the 3D map here will become visible to the onboard LiDAR sensor or camera only if the vehicle reaches the green view cell. If you click that, you'll see the video, which demonstrates that using this fundamental data reorganization, can eliminate vast amounts of irrelevant occluded data from client-side processing, maintaining a very efficient hyper-local data cache, and that this also eliminates large amounts of irrelevant occluded and unchanged data from network transmission, significantly reducing bandwidth requirements. Next slide, please. Uh, this, data, this slide uh, summarizes our SBIR work for Army Research Office completed in 2019. We flew over the Fort Indian Town Gap combined arms collective training facility and converted a uh, massive uh, point cloud data of about 4.4 million points uh, to a JPEG stream at all at a tiny 27 kilobits per second. That's met, not megabits per second, but 27 kilobits per second to stream all of this data uh, essentially real time. Next slide, please. Uh, this shows potential tactical uh, new capabilities uh, operating in obstacle rich densely included urban environments. Uh, enabling agile autonomous navigation in denied areas through what we call rapid reconnaissance in depth. And that is the ability to quickly and cooperatively acquire and disseminate 3D map data needed for precision GPS and denied navigation. And, we, and the, the underlying metadata also supports intelligent gold-based uh, autonomy, including adaptive route finding, exhaustive cooperative search, identification of concealed firing positions. And all of this is made possible through the uh, view cell, nav cell visibility metadata, which includes this pre-computed view shed data unique to this type of data stream. And this uh, metadata can also facilitate enhanced line of sight communities, both peer-to-peer -peer line of sight comms deep within the urban canyon, as well as assured line of sight comms from within the urban canyon to orbiting aircraft and satellites, again, using this pre-computed uh, view shell metadata. Uh, next slide is a statement of work focusing on the, uh, the phase four demonstration plan to take uh, us TRL level four to five and three to four for en our encoder and client server and to demonstrate significant performance improvement for 3D map matching algorithms using this protocol. The next slide shows that there's significant dual use potential for this technology, including, including closing an important uh, capability gap in the FAA's emerging unmanned traffic management system especially operating at lower uh, altitudes where GPS does not work reliably. JPEG stream data is designed to support trajectory-based operations and performance-based navigation in the urban canyon. And finally, on the right, JPEG software can also enable entirely new ways to stream game content, 
Instant Interactive is the wholly owned entertainment division of Primal Space Systems, which is developing GPEG middleware for game engines to allow instant on-demand play uh, and completely eliminating game downloads. Uh, and you can read about this in piece uh, that was done by uh, about GPEG technology by VentureBeat last week. Uh, just Google GPEG and VentureBeat and you'll see a nice article about that application. I thank you for your time. Great. Okay, we got the camera feedback. Dr. Jenkins, great, um, great presentation there. Thank you. We've got a few questions. Few questions come coming here. I think first, though, I wonder if we can clarify a little bit about kind of the core IP. You know, I'm, I'm gathering it's really built around eliminating unnecessary pieces of data pre-processing, right? Yeah, Is so that accurate? For, so, uh, that's accurate. It's not really about compression. Uh, we can use compression, but we don't. We use data relevance. It's visibility based, the pre computation of what data is relevant to the sensor in very small hyper local regions. We do have 11 patents, uh, US and international, in this area that form like the core, uh, what we think are the essential patents for these methods. Got it. And, and you said it's, it's built, you mentioned LIDAR a lot. Are, are the models only working for LIDAR type data where you're, you're going in, in known environments and that's sort of how your models are built? Or is it, could it be used so for any sort of data? It, it's really agnostic of sensor. It's any 3D data. It could be photogrammetry, uh, stereo camera, uh, or LIDAR data. So anytime you have 3D data, um, uh, JPEG is designed to support that data. Got it. Great. What, what sort of delay is there in the, because this is pre-processing, right? So it's gotta be pretty rapid before moving it to yeah. the processor. So we, we are continuously improving the speed of our encoder. We think it could get pretty close to near real time depending on encoding resources. One thing that's actually very fast is early change detection on the client. So if you have an existing 3D prior database on board, and there are changes in the environment compared to that onboard 3D database, we can rapidly detect those changes and encode those little changes. And then for instance, upload them to uh, a local or, re or remote navigational data repository. So that can actually be very fast. And it's an early change detection capability that we think could be very valuable, not only for remapping, but for battle damage assessment and for other reconnaissance where change detection uh, is important. Got it. Are, are there any risks in this strategy of sort of pre-classifying based on just, you know, for example, LIDAR or spatial data before combining it with other data streams? Uh, no. Well, we think actually fuse, data fusion here is really facilitated by having a good uh, geospatial database. In fact, we're working with SOCOM now in an early project for fusing this with uh, with video data and, and enabling the reduction of bandwidth by looking at what are the changes in video sub windows based on having existing 3D data on board. So we think there's actually a lot of opportunities for data fusion that are created by this sort of geo registered data that's always on board that you could compare in real time uh, sort of 3D pose data to from video. So yeah, we think there's opportunities for additional 3D fusion applications. So how fast would it work if you didn't have any data? I mean, if you're going into a basically an area that was unpopulated, there would be no reason to map it prior. Yeah. How quickly could you then create your map from that? Well, I, that, that's a good question. We think it could be done pretty quickly because what we would propose is using a number of small attributable UASs to enter that area and do a cooperative mapping. So a lot of, you know, so, so basically we bootstrap the data and then, uh, and then we could do peer-to-peer. -peer. So each client could actually be a server uh, for adjacent data in that area. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it does take longer than, um, could propagate uh, back to, uh, to, to NGA and other places, but we really see this as, as an edge-centric edge processing, more like a CDN where this data is really at the edge of the network. That's where it lives. That's where it's most efficient. Uh, and it eliminates, the, you know, longer latency concerns. By the way, we're latency insensitive because all this data is prefetched. So video streaming, like interactively, has a problem with latency. So we're prefetching normally hundreds of milliseconds ahead. So even on a geospatial uplink, uh, like an interactive user would not feel the latency. So for October, what would your demonstration, proof of concept demonstration, consist of? So our proof of concept demonstration would 
uh, take our encoder uh, up to TRL level uh, four and or, or, or five, our, our client server for this application would go to TRL four. And we would demonstrate that this data is structured to improve the performance of sensor-based navigation system that is 3D map matching and after with what's the performance of the sensor-based navigation algorithm uh, uh, using this data and not using this data. And we've already uh, developed some data on what the bandwidth requirements are and we would refine those further. Great. A question here about how does your technology prioritize rapid data changes to minimize that collection at the edge in, in kind of what resolution? Uh, yeah, so, well, I'm not quite sure I understand. I mean, we at the resolution, again, is, is, is sensor limited uh, for the most part, although we do have, so this is very scalable. Uh, we, we could, uh, you know, when, the, if the network is really compromised, we could, we could deliver at lower MIP resolutions, which is a, which is a texture uh, based encoding and lower uh, geometric level of detail, for instance. So it's very silly into like packet loss and network jitter. We're using TCP IP, uh, but we also can, it, it's, it's very scalable in terms of like a perceptually lossless uh, uh, type of uh, performance degradation. Got it. Uh, you go ahead. I was going to say, can you kind of talk about your funding streams and where you're going? How much funding is this going to take for to go to phase four of the competition here? And what other funding streams do you have or other? Dollars as a startup company, uh, our, but, the, but our investors are focused on the entertainment applications. So uh, we have inbound strategic interest on the entertainment side. JPEG, like MPEG, has nothing to do with MPEG, but it's an entirely new way to stream not only games, but in fact, it enables um, uh, new types of interactive entertainment uh, content for things like uh, Netflix Interactive and uh, HBO Max Interactive. Right? So we, our funding's been on that. We've been very interested in, uh, in defense and tactical applications, but that hasn't been our primary funding. We did a small SBIR with ARO last year, and, and we are looking for some uh, contractual support to really build out the, uh, the, the tactical use case uh, for, this, uh, for this software. Underlying, there's a lot of similarities with the encoder for both games and sim, for instance, um, on the entertainment side, but there's, uh, there's a lot of similarities in both the, uh, the encoder server and client pieces, uh, but there are special use cases adaptations that we need to make for tactical and navigational applications. And that's what we're looking for uh, support from XTech Search today. Got it, awesome. So to clarify, you're not working already with any of the ar existing army efforts and sort of the next gen combat vehicle or uh, autonomous systems? We are not. Okay, got it, cool. Um, and I, th I think that kind of concludes all the mm -hmm. questions we had here. So Dr. Jenkins, thank you very much. Great presentation. Okay. Thank you.